She would always come home smelling like body odor, yeast, and feet. <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it is totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're jumping back into r slash legbeard stories. Apparently I'm in the mood to do a weird uh, semi-British accent. <laughs> this is an unfortunate nookie. No, no. This is I lived with a legbeard for four years and counting. So who knows how long this series could go on for. Hopefully uh, 30 plus parts. <laughs> but I know I'll probably get frustrated at some point. It seems like a pretty cool one to mix in here. A lot of series ending, so uh, we'll just, you know, get some new ones started. And I think that's pretty cool. Feel free to go ahead and check out the podcast. You know, I'm reading creepypastas over on Date and Dies. You know, uh, we got a lot of plugs and stuff to get out of the way. And then I promise we will dive right into some of this Legbeard Stories cringe. I probably should update that plug thing uh, sooner rather than later, but I don't know where the project file is. <laughs> Maybe we start from scratch. Maybe we make a whole new one. Anyways, I have lived with a leg beard for four years and counting part one. Written by user my name is a chef 696. <laughs> 69. That's the sex number. Nice. This started as a super quick ramble for Red X's Discord server in a way of venting because I just wanted to get some stuff off my chest, but it got too long for the character limit and I didn't want to spam. We also don't allow venting in the Discord server, <laughs> just so's you know, because a lot of times it turns into, you know, attention seeking and one-upsmanship and like, ooh, who had the most traumatic childhood? No, no, that's not what we're here for, all right? <laughs> So, with all that being the case, OP is going to go into more detail and post it up here on a throwaway account in r slash red x reads. Hey, good idea. Then I can read it on the channel. Then way more people will see it than <laughs> are in the Discord server, I'm pretty sure. So this girl is still my roommate and still one of my best friends. Really? <laughs> And I would hate for my in-the-moment venting to get back to her through my main accounts where she's following my neckbeard stories. So, uh, yeah. Bruh, you, you're talking behind her back? Oh, this is juicy. Spill the tea, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> this isn't so much a story as it is just a list of her leg beardy tendencies and some tangentially related behaviors and attitudes she has that annoy me. I mean, maybe this is a thing that you should take up with her. I don't know if <laughs> making a Reddit post is the right idea. Communication is the key. Like, you say she's your best friend, but then you're <laughs> going all ham on a Reddit post? I guess we'll have to see just how bad it gets. But please, keep in mind as you're reading that you are only being told about her absolute worst traits. I've always thought that she's a lovely person, despite these annoyances, and I still do. The pros of being her friend vastly outweigh the cons. Alright, I know, you just need to get it off your chest. It seems like sort of weird and, and snaky to me, but it also sounds really juicy, so <laughs> you know I'm gonna do it. Being her roommate, not so much. But at the moment, I don't have any other options. She is the one on the lease, and I don't have anyone else that I feel safe rooming with. And, at the end of the day, she is still human. She's also getting better about certain things. Slowly, but hey, growth is growth. Yeah, I hope that you guys have talked about all this stuff. Really, it's not easy to be roommates with anyone at all. I enjoyed being roommates with, with Ramtide and a couple other people for a long time, but they still had little things that they did, you know? Like filling their room up with cigarette butts and bean burrito wrappers. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did that. The floor was an ashtray, which, you know, I didn't really care because the security deposit on the lease was gone long before I showed up, but <laughs> still, it can't be good for, you, for your health or something like that. My solution was just not to hang out in his room. <laughs> you can come to my room if you want, but use an ashtray, goddammit. 
Uh, so forgive any spelling or grammar mistakes or weirdly worded sentences. She's actually my beta reader, and I obviously can't show her this one. <laughs> also marking this is not safe for work for talk about things like period blood and suicide and sex toys. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> but uh, thanks for the heads up. Yeah, leg beards, neck beards, they gross. Dip out if you need to. You know how it goes. Anyway, leg beardy tendencies. All right. We got like four years worth of pent up bullshit. So let's see if I can organize my thoughts better in this, the second draft. <laughs> oh boy. First up is hygiene, of course. Despite hearing her shower pretty regularly, she always had a bit of eau de poisson et corps odor about her, which apparently, according to Google Translate, means uh, fish water. <laughs> but it does sound classier when you dress it up in French, doesn't it? <laughs> Sometimes it's so subtle that you wouldn't notice unless you're literally hugging her, which I have learned the hard way. And sometimes it's so overbearing that I can smell her lingering after she vacates a room. Women are not supposed to smell like fish. If you smell like fish, you, you probably got something going on with your JJ that you need to get checked out with your local doctor, all right? Girl, you need to wash your butt. Yes, this is out of concern. <laughs> I'm not being mean on that one. I'm I'm legitimately concerned for your vagina. <laughs> yeah, that's my side gig. <laughs> now, up until recently, she was working in the mall food court. Oh god. <laughs> the fishy scent lady working at Wetzel's Pretzels. <laughs> She'd be around a 500 Fahrenheit degree oven for 8 to 12 hours a day. Up to six days a week. And since I've gotten food there, I know firsthand how hot it can be, even on the other side of the counter. I mean, big respect for that, you know? She, she's got to hustle. She does work. It would be impossible not to sweat your ass off as an employee. So I don't really fault her for that. But because the products this kiosk served were baked goods, made fresh all day, every day, up to an hour before they closed... There was a lot of flour and yeast everywhere, and she probably didn't wash her uniform that often. Maybe once a week. Yeah, I see where this is going. Like I said, you need to get some of that monostat or, or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is for a yeast infection, but please, wash your pants after you're working with yeast. Don't scratch your vagina when you come home. <laughs> uh, she had enough shirts from the store that she probably could have gotten by washing them all on her day off and then wearing a different one each day. But she would wear the same one over and over and over. And of course, that added to her smell. She would always come home smelling like body odor, yeast, and feet. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Fishy feet <laughs> and body odor and yeast. These are, like, not the most horrible smells, you know? We've had no mentions of smegma or ass, but this is still pretty bad. <laughs> Unfortunate. I would just sit her down and have a, a, a nice conversation about why it's important to shower. Hey, look, you come home, I notice this. I'm not trying to embarrass you or anything. This is out of concern for your health. Please do this for yourself. Now, her feet which I recently discovered are red and swollen and covered in some sort of brownish discoloration. Uh, uh, always smelled the worst of all things on a human body that could possibly smell. <laughs> There's a fungal infection going on too. She got them yeasty toes, right? <laughs> uh, I still get the feeling that she doesn't wash or change her socks that often. And when she worked for this kiosk, she wore a pair of three plus year old non-slips that smelled awful and were literally falling apart. I don't know, man. As a friend, we'll go halvesies on the shoes if you really need them. 
I think you could probably tell if the if the socks don't get changed that much if they're crunchy, right? <laughs> Go check out her laundry basket, and if you pick up the sock and can crack it in half like a piece of beef jerky, <laughs> then she probably wears them a few times too many. Although you probably want to wear gloves while while you do that. Pro tip. <laughs> As soon as she took off her shoes, the smell of her feet would fill the entire apartment. <laughs> oh, God. Just an overpowering spoiled dairy smell. Oh, that on more than one occasion made me gag if I had to be around her after she had just got home, or if I had to walk down the hallway after she did. Oh, dairy smell? You know that ain't right. <laughs> What's a foot doctor called? <laughs> Can the OBGYN tell me something about the feet as well? <laughs> There's a lot that's going wrong here. Ah, uh, what's the what's the stuff for foot fungus? Tough actin tenactin. That's what you need. <laughs> Boom! Tough actin tenactin. Clinically proven tenactin cures even tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. That'll knock that fungus right out. Hopefully. It seems like it's pretty severe. God. Now, both of these things have gotten a lot better since she quit the kiosk. Oh, hell yeah. Moving up in the world. Proud of you, beauty. We ain't even given her a name yet. That seems wild to me. Anyway, she now works an office job where she is in a temperature-controlled room for only eight hours at a time, and she has a strict dress code. So now she's required to wear different clothes every day. See? Things is turning out all right at the end of it all. You put in your time, you did some hustle, now you got a, a cushy office job. You enjoying that? It's probably pretty cool for the first couple of years until you realize there's no upward mobility. And then you gotta quit. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that wearing different clothes every day is like an actual rule. But given that it's an office and it is business casual, People would notice if she wore the same blouse and skirt or slacks every day, and they would complain if she smelled. So, social pressure at the very least forces her to wear clean clothes and shower more regularly. I actually haven't smelled her at all since she got her new job, and when I can, it's this lovely rose perfume that I got her for Christmas last year. Oh, all right, good. <laughs> then it seems like the whole hygiene thing was a non-issue. I'm glad she got it all figured out, honestly. To be fair, the, the social contract still exists if you're working out of Wetzel's Pretzels, though. I mean, people will just come up and get their pretzel and walk away and go, God damn, that bitch real stink. <laughs> you know? Like, just because you're locked in a room with these office people doesn't make it a different situation, really. But whatever. If that's the motivation that you need, then, then hang on to that, I suppose. <laughs> Now that she's not being run into the ground by managers who take advantage of her helpful nature to overschedule her because literally none of her coworkers are reliable, she has more energy and she's gotten into a really good morning routine. Something that I actually still struggle with. Yeah, my morning routine is more like a afternoon routine. <laughs> Wake up at 2 p.m. Living that YouTube life. But when I did have to wake up at 8 for my office job, yeah, I was still horrible at it. <laughs> she wakes up early, showers, has breakfast, and then actually gets to do her hair and makeup and dress up a little, even if she's just eating microwave egg bowls and toaster pastries. I feel like the routine does put her in a better mood in the morning, and has helped her mental health at least a little bit. Not being in a fucking mall food court, working with teenagers who can't use any of the equipment probably helps too. Well, I like how this is turning out. She's moving up and out, pushing her life forward. A mall food court, that is like a temporary job. You know what I'm saying? You want to get that over and done with as soon as possible. And she did. She's obviously got some, some muscle in her hustle. You know what I'm saying? She got a new job. And now that said job is not consuming every moment of her time, she has time to shower, do her little morning routine. Ah, good for you, Legbeard. However... Despite this glow up, uh oh, <laughs> there's still a few things to nitpick. I don't think that she brushes her teeth regularly. Oops, <laughs> she has plaque and some pretty foul morning breath. 
If she skips breakfast, I just kind of hope that she doesn't talk too much during our carpool ride to work. She drops me off since my place is on the way. Because yeah, her breath is bad. I don't have any fancy descriptions because it just smells like really intense morning breath. But the same way her feet filled up a room, her morning breath fills up the car. Yeah, that's a lot less square footage to fill up. <laughs> Honestly, I do think that a good conversation. Look, I'm not trying to hurt you, but it smells like you got some yuck mouth going on. All right. Did you brush your teeth? Could you? I'm sure I'm not the only one that has noticed, and I'm telling you this as a friend. Please, brush your teeth in the morning. There's also her hands. Sometimes she'll boot my nose or grab my face and kiss my hair slash tell me I'm cute if I'm in a bad mood or having those sad boy hours. Or sometimes I'll be telling dad jokes or making random noises because ha ha funny and she'll try to put her hand over my mouth to shut me up. Whatever the case, sometimes her hands come near my face and they literally smell like she just had them down her pants. Oh God, oh God, both poopy and fishy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. Uh, you shouldn't be smelling poopy or fishy. Please, <laughs> we need to do something about this. Again, it's a hard conversation to have, but it's for the best for both of us. God, and she's touching your face with it. Hold on, I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> They're never like wet or damp with sweat or anything else, but God, they reek. And it makes me wonder if she just got done scratching her asshole because then I have to go wash my face with bleach. <laughs> uh, this whole situation is, is not good. I guess it wasn't pretzel yeast that was making her smell fishy. So yeah, you still need to take that trip to the OB, and and when you come back home, OP is gonna have a nice big box of wet wipes waiting for you, all right? No more poopy smell, no more fishy smell. We're moving onwards and upwards with our lives. I mean, honestly, it's not your job to, to fix this person, but they are your friend, so shouldn't you want to? Just have some of those hard conversations with her. Uh, next we get to cleanliness slash kitchen issues. Oh boy. I don't know if this girl even knows the meaning of the word. Trash just seems to pile up in her general vicinity as if it was being summoned straight from the dumpster, be it her bedroom or car or shared living spaces, and it takes forever to get thrown away if I don't say anything or don't just do it myself. I know I shouldn't have to clean up her messes in the living room or kitchen, but it doesn't get done otherwise, and I like having a clean apartment, especially since she likes to invite her friends over without warning, and I don't want people thinking that I live in that state. <laughs> uh, oh, you got a real Oscar and Felix situation going on. Odd couple, anybody? No? Just showing my age a little bit there. <laughs> and also, please don't invite people over without telling me. That's horrible. But you said yourself she does seem to respond when you tell her things, so yeah. I think all of this stuff could be solved with a conversation. Show her this video and or Reddit post. And you could say, I know this might hurt, but this video is about you. <laughs> or you could do the, the sidelong tactic and be like, wow, doesn't this sound like somebody that we know? <laughs> I don't know if it'll work, but uh, staying silent definitely won't work. Now... We both have depression, and we both used to work super long days at very labor-intensive jobs. Her at the kiosk, and me in a professional kitchen. So, I won't pretend that I don't also have my moments where tidying up falls to the wayside in favor of just making sure that I can keep functioning and going to work through a depression spike. God, I feel so seen with that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever pulled myself out of it. The apartment just kind of spiraled into oblivion. But I did survive, so, uh, so that's good. <laughs> I have my weeks slash months where I just let my trash overflow and forget to bring the dishes to the sink. 
And when it's bad, I do find myself ordering takeout, and the trash kind of, I don't know, lingers. Clothes do pile up, and bed sheets go unlaundered until I'm able to pick myself back up. The difference between the two of us is that I try to keep my mess secluded to my own room. She does not. Well, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe you try uh, fighting fire with fire or, or fighting trash pile with a trash pile. Just see who can make the bigger trash pile. It'll be a fun game. <laughs> you see why I insist that not all of my advice is good advice? Actually, very little of it is. <laughs> as far as her room goes, I don't remember when I last saw the floor. There's just so much trash. Mostly fast food containers or chip bags, etc. And piles of dirty clothes that I probably would have forgotten the color of her carpet if I wasn't already aware that it is the same white beige color as mine. Although hers leans a bit more towards the beige side. <laughs> At least it isn't brown or black. The beige carpet turned brownish black <laughs> once Ramtide was done filling it up with cigarette butts. I mean, I love the boy, but but he's an outdoor type of friend, you know? <laughs> I don't usually go into her room unless I absolutely have to, whether to return a personal item that she left in the living room, passively aggressively dumping her clothes on her bed because she forgot to empty the dryer, or to ask her a question, but... Ooh, boy. Yeah, just text each other or something, that's fine. <laughs> Leave the clothes outside, you don't actually need to go in there. Leave the personal item outside her door as a tribute, and then run. <laughs> it doesn't really smell because she constantly burns candles, but I can't imagine how awful it would smell if she didn't. There have been times where I pop my head in several days in a row, and the same dirty dishes or pizza boxes are still on her bed. Eventually, they do get put on the floor. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> but this has happened enough times for me to get that she's literally sleeping with trash and dirty dishes in her bed. Bruh. I can't even sleep if I have crumbs on the sheet. I can't imagine rolling over and getting a face full of half-eaten KFC Famous Bowl. <laughs> oh, my wife is much the same way. She's like, I feel something's in the bed. I'm like, I don't notice it at all. I did sleep with trash in the bed. This is why I often say my wife saved me from myself. Did it take a lot of hard conversations and a lot of changing? Hell yes, it did, but I'm a better person for it, so... Maybe give it a try, OP, if, if you really are in invested in seeing this legbeard better herself. She very rarely washes her sheets, which were a lovely pastel pink when she first bought them, <laughs> but have now faded into this gray-brown-pink color. Oh, God! Some of her pillows, all of which are devoid of their cases, are white around the edges, but a sort of brown where she lays her head. Oh, man, why? <laughs> you know, you can wash the bedding stuff, right? Please, stop doing this. <laughs> the rest of her pillows are all the way brownish yellow. Her mattress also sports that off-color elliptical stain where she sleeps. And in turn, that elliptical stain is also covered in massive, patchy splotches of dried blood. Uh... Oh, <laughs> this is real bad. I mean, I ain't never had a period, and and I <laughs> assume that maybe little whoopsies do happen, but <laughs> OP says massive patchy splotches. Uh, she just doesn't care that much. Man, what is going on? Now, anyone who does have periods probably relates to having blood stains on the mattress. Sometimes you go to sleep on white sheets and wake up on the Japanese flag, you know? <laughs> That's beautiful. Sometimes your flow is heavier than you thought, or your pad shifts out of place as you roll around and you just keep bleeding, completely unaware. But most of us try to clean up the blood as best we can, right? 
good old hydrogen peroxide, little dash of cornstarch. Most of us try not to let it happen again. We change our blood catcher of choice. We change our sheets. We put down a towel to sleep on top of. My roommate? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one of those hard conversations. I refuse to believe that she just doesn't give a shit that much. Who is okay with rolling around in their own blood? You wake up covered in crusty blood? No! <laughs> this is horrible! Ugh. She's confessed to me on more than one occasion that she doesn't wear pads or tampons unless she absolutely has to, and is extremely lazy about changing them. I should just change my pad, but I get so comfortable. Yeah, you might want to look up this thing called septic shock. <laughs> Jesus. To be fair, she has picos and experiences pretty irregular periods. When she does have one, they're for the most part short and pretty light. She just kind of spots, so whatever. If you don't need it as often as someone with a heavy flow, then okay, you don't need it. But I still don't think that that is an excuse to sit on your ass and let yourself bleed onto your mattress. <laughs> Especially when you have no intention of cleaning it up. You just gonna let that shit soak in? Fucking nasty! <laughs> uh, to say the very least. Honestly, I think Picos gives even less of an excuse. If your periods are, are lighter and shorter, then yeah, just catch it. Wear a pad for a couple of days, you good, you know? Of course, that does come with its own set of challenges and whatnot, but yeah, as far as the period goes, I I'm pretty sure it ain't that hard to sleep on top of a towel, right? God, I'm glad I never have to experience this. <laughs> uh, this is so complicated. But wait, OP, you said the stains were massive. If she has short light periods, how is that possible? And to that, I say that I said she has irregular periods, which are, for the most part, pretty light. Every so often, she does have a heavy period that can last for over a week. One time, one of her heavy periods lasted for nearly three. Three week period? Bro, you gotta go to the doctor. <laughs> Something's going on there. Now, she does see a doctor for this before anyone tells me to tell her to go. Okay, good. <laughs> and because she's getting treatment, here's where I'd usually say that wouldn't normally be an issue, but y'all goddamn know that there is an issue because this chick ain't normal. I mean, I don't want you to pick on her for having Picos or anything, but <laughs> I gotta say, you're right. Sitting on the mattress and just bleeding all over it and not giving a damn, that is not normal behavior. <laughs> Something is severely wrong. She needs more than the doctor. She, she probably needs a therapist. A little bit of therapy, help out some. Has that been suggested? Would she be offended? Because uh, I'll be honest, therapy can help a lot. Even when she has her heavy periods, she doesn't change her standards of menstrual care. She might actually wear a pad, but then she'll let that pad get soaked with blood and then just sit there with her overflowing pad. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Just freely bleeding into her mattress. Ugh. This is a hard one to stomach. This is like on a different level than most of the stories that we get. <laughs> Sometimes she'll even sleep like that and I genuinely cannot wrap my head around it. Maybe it's because I'm trans and periods make me dysphoric, but I can't stand having a full pad at all. Even if my cramps are so bad I'm immobilized, I will crawl to the bathroom to change my pad slash tampon. I use both on my heavy days, and I wipe myself down with wet wipes if I need to. God, this is just a nightmare. <laughs> As a 30-year-old man, I've never really uh talked in detail ab about periods or, or how hellish it actually is. I know that I'm glad that I don't experience, but after reading all this, I'm I'm really glad that I don't experience it. <laughs> God damn. I'm so sorry. Uh, imagining myself sitting in a bloody pad with bloody underwear on a bloody mattress. 
is literally making me so nauseous right now. I need to move on, but not before telling you that I have seen used pads on her floor before. <laughs> Damn it. On more than one occasion. Yeah, like, she literally just took off her underwear with the used pads still attached and dropped them on the floor. Gags in my mouth a little. <laughs> God damn, dude. <laughs> Does she not understand that the floor is not actually a trash can? I don't know how to explain that one. I am now of the opinion that she requires a bit more than a stern talking to. Uh, therapy. Rush her to a therapist as soon as either one of you could afford it. Preferably her, but, you know, needs must. If you really have to live with this person for an extended period. Anyways, back to dirty dishes. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> what a relief. She loves to hoard them. On the rare occasion where she does clean her room, the sink and the counter will magically fill up with dirty dishes overnight. <laughs> Sometimes with things that have been in a room for so long that I actually almost forgot that we had them. <laughs> Because she has long hair and sheds like a sick animal. <laughs> uh, sometimes they even have hair stuck to them. Yum. Sheds like a sick animal. Bro, this shade is so heavy. <laughs> Forewarning. This might be the most rambly part of this story because it focuses on the kitchen. And I have so much pent-up rage about how she treats the kitchen. Literally, everything else would be a non-issue if it wasn't for the kitchen. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> you just figure out something else, but... It is the biggest issue, I can tell, and that's okay. <laughs> I can deal with having to be the one to pick up her soda cans from the living room every now and then. And I could deal with the personality ticks that we haven't even gotten into yet. And I could deal with having to look at her trash every time I go into her room if, and only if, the kitchen wasn't such a fucking disaster all the time. <laughs> the kitchen issue has made me consider moving out at least once a week. Unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to go. Believe me, I have talked to many a friend and coworker. And as a masculine AFAB pre-T trans person in Trump country, I just don't feel safe moving in with a stranger. I mean, you don't feel safe moving in with a stranger in your state. But how about you go all the way to California, where they're generally pretty accepting of these things, and then you only have to pay, like, you know, triple the rent. <laughs> it's not a good suggestion either. I think the conversation and a bit of therapy is the easiest way to get over this issue. So, okay. The kitchen. Let me try and bring myself back to a simmer because I'm already about to boil over and I'm tossing up a word salad with a super salty vinaigrette. <laughs> I like this OP's writing style. It's got some good analogies in there. First of all, since I work open to close, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. most days, I usually just eat breakfast and lunch and dinner at work. It's a hell of a shift. I really only cook on my days off, when the kitchen is clean, and even then it's mostly just rice and miso soup or some kind of sautéed tofu or chicken dish or gyoza. Simple, light, mostly healthy. And I don't dirty that many dishes since I do most of my prep work at work and then bring it home into go boxes. Are you, are you stealing product from work? <laughs> I can't sign off on that. Jesus. When the kitchen is dirty, as it usually is, I just order food. As you can imagine, I save a lot on groceries, but that money always ends up going to local restaurants anyways, so I can't really brag. I mean, I would have to know a lot more about the restaurant and how they treat their employees before I say, yeah, go ahead, brag about stealing food from work. But my default mode is, yeah, probably maybe don't brag about that. Not just because, you know, you're screwing over your boss, which at, at this point, I don't give a damn about them. <laughs> but mostly because, yeah, you, you're probably going to get caught. <laughs> it is on a throwaway, but it's not hard to connect the dots. Just hope the internet sleuths stay off your tail. Anyway, 
<laughs> I also can't remember the last time I cooked a large meal in that kitchen, which sucks because I do genuinely love to cook. But my point to all of this is that she is the only one cooking in the kitchen 90% of the time, meaning that 90% of the messes are hers. Well, you seemed okay with cleaning up some of her messes earlier. I don't know. It's kind of like a, a Sisyphus situation, isn't it? You, you clean it all up and you go to work and you come back home and it's all messed up again. How many times can you possibly do it before you completely lose your mind? As far as pots and pans go, she'll leave them on the stove, letting whatever food she cooked dry up, meaning I have no choice but to scrub it, even if it could have been a rinse and dishwasher situation had she not left it to sit. Dishwasher situation. <laughs> uh, that's rough. She does the same things with bowls and plates, cooking utensils and silverware. She doesn't bother washing or rinsing anything. She doesn't even put them in the sink to soak, which sure you shouldn't do anyways, but because she lets everything dry, her dirty dishes need at least a few minutes with some hot soapy water anyways, and that's if they even make it to the sink at all. Sometimes she'll bring out some dirty dishes and just leave them on the counter. And before you ask, yes, she is one of those people who leave the butter knife on the counter after making a sandwich. I mean, it, it seems understandable to me when I was in a, a depressive phase. I didn't really give a damn enough to even move the butter knife six inches into the sink. Who cares anyways? Now, as a relatively normal functioning person, I'm like, wow, it's so easy to move the butter knife into the sink. But I don't know. There was a time in my life where I wasn't willing to do that. I was perfectly capable. I just wasn't willing. <sighs> because I try to be one of the other people, the kind of person that won't clean up your messes for you, she sometimes does actually do the dishes. But only if she's used them all up and has nothing to cook with or eat on. <laughs> Extreme needs, but yeah, needs must. <laughs> In those cases, though, she fills up the dishwasher and then cleans what she needs in that moment by hand. Half the time when she fills up the dishwasher, she doesn't even turn it on. <laughs> and when she does, she turns it to the wrong setting and the dishes don't get clean anyways. Meaning I inevitably have to give everything a good scrub and then run them through again for good measure. I mean, I gotta say, at least she's trying. It takes extreme situations to get her to try. But she's there. She's she's filling up the dishwasher. She doesn't do it the way that you want. But again, maybe a little conversation about how to do it properly could change things. But again, I, I don't really know. I'm not in the situation. All we really have to go off of is one side of the story from a Reddit post. So I'll just take all this with a grain of salt. All right. <laughs> If you say she's this horrible, then, you know, maybe she is. But honestly, all of this stuff does seem fixable, as we've seen showcased with the, the job stuff, right? She is capable of change when it's required of her. And I still believe in this leg beard, goddammit. <laughs> so, yeah. Dirty dishes are a given. But when she's left to her own devices, the counters quickly fill with empty food boxes and wrappers, like the kind that frozen pizzas and shit come in, pantry staples that should have been put back in the pantry, food scraps for meal prep, and shopping bags galore. It is sadly a very common sight in my kitchen, and it disgusts me. As mentioned before, I work in a professional kitchen, so everything being clean and sanitary and well-organized are really big things for me. I won't use the kitchen at all when it's not up to my standards, but I feel like any normal and sane person would feel the same way. It gets so nasty, guys. <laughs> I mean, I know my wife uh, really enjoys a clean kitchen. As far as I go, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Get the food cooked, it's fine. So yeah, like I said earlier, literally Oscar and Felix situation. <laughs> We've been battling a fruit fly problem for six months now, and it's a fucking miracle that we don't have cockroaches because I refuse to clean up for her, and shit just kind of sits around until it becomes clean. She's not going to do it either, and I just kind of cave because I slowly go crazy every time I have to look at that goddamn mess. 
to be fair, I mean, OP, you're kind of enabling that a little bit. And uh, OP acknowledges and says, I know I shouldn't, and I should be more passive aggressive. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd leave her dishes on her bed or something. Since calm, adult conversations about these issues haven't worked, but I can't help it. You can't fault a guy for wanting to cook in his own kitchen. And I deserve home-cooked food, too. You definitely do. And since you say that calm adult conversations haven't worked, maybe there do need to be repercussions, okay? Maybe you bar her from the kitchen. Maybe you, you buy your own little uh, gas stove or something like that and cook your own meals, hide your plates and shit so she has to deal with the kitchen mess herself at some point. I don't really know. It seems like an extreme measure, but sometimes you need extreme measures. I think that therapy could help out with all of this, but if she can't afford it or is unwilling to go, then all right. I guess we have to take matters into our own hands. So anytime I want to cook, I need to clean for inspection or friends coming over. It takes me nearly an hour, sometimes two, to scrub and sanitize the kitchen up to my standards. I take advantage of the clean kitchen and cook myself a meal or two, cleaning up my own mess as I go, but inevitably the kitchen is right back to that trashy state again in a week or less. Wow, OP, that sure sucks, you must be saying, and yes, yes it does. <laughs> But I feel like I haven't even gotten to the most frustrating part. See, everyone probably has a messy roommate horror story, and I've heard descriptions of sinks that can turn stomachs. At least our dishes have never gone moldy. But reader, the blatant disrespect that she has for kitchen equipment, specifically my kitchen equipment. <laughs> like I said, I'm sticking with my theory that you should just hide all your shit. My knives, my spoons, my forks, plates, all in a cabinet, in my room. You don't get any of it. Buy your own stuff to ruin. <laughs> now is the time to mention that I'm the one who bought, or uh, otherwise provided, most of our kitchenware when we moved in together. Are you lifting kitchen stuff from work too? <laughs> I'm not gonna comment on it. She got the odd thrift store find, a whole cabinet of mugs and gifts from her mom, which she's literally never used. But for the most part, everything is mine. From dishware, to cutlery, to cookware, to utensils. I pride myself in how well I've outfitted my kitchen with shiny new stainless steel. But few things compare to the well-loved gifts from my parents. I mean, there's nothing wrong with hiding it away. <laughs> go cook in your room with your new gas stove. There you go. Problem solved, you're welcome. Next. <laughs> My mom passed away before I moved out. Oof, sorry about that. So I don't know if it was her intention to give me these when I got them, but my dad let me take her two pizza stones, which had been a wedding present. Pizza stones like cast iron skillets are one of those kitchen items that get better the more you use them. And they can last years if you care for them properly. Not forever. Probably not for several generations, but at least for a single person's lifetime. They work similar to cast iron in that as soon as you use it, the fat and oils burn off and leave a nice non-stick surface. We've made pizza with them, but mom would use them for cookies as well, as they absorb moisture in the baking process and can give you a nice crisp edge, but leave a gooey center, the best kind of cookies. Yeah, like little sweet pizzas or something like that, right? Ha, that's next level thinking. <laughs> now the best part of pizza stones is that they are pretty low maintenance. Leave it in the oven till it's cool, scrape off the food with a bench scraper or a spatula, and then wipe it down well with cold water and a clean sponge or towel. You leave it to air dry and then pop it back in the oven. You're not even supposed to use soap on these guys and stains are your friend but they are porous and you're never supposed to submerge them or expose them to any kind of chemical cleaner. Uh-oh. <laughs> she ruined your pizza stones. Was all of this explained to her? I don't know if this is a, a malicious act or, or just ignorance, because I didn't know anything about pizza stones until I just read what she said. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've kind of given Legbeard the benefit of the doubt again. So, yeah, of course... My roomie ran them through the dishwasher, effectively ruining them. 
Thankfully, it was just one cycle, and after some TLC and a lot of pizza, <laughs> I was able to re-season them and get the soap taste out. Thankfully, it hasn't happened again after I lectured her, as she now uses metal baking sheets to make her frozen pizza. Lamau. See, I don't think that you told her properly that this was what was going to happen. She was trying to help you out. Come on now. Along with the two pizza stones, my dad also sent me away with two of our family's three cast iron skillets. One perfectly seasoned, and one a little worse for the wear. They'd both been in his family since he was born, and I feel like he mistreated the one a bit on purpose to see if I could get it re-seasoned. Ah, a true test of skill. <laughs> I did, and all was well until about a month ago. Roommate had some mutual friends over, and she made them a big dinner that I didn't get to partake in, both because I ate at work and because I don't really trust her in the kitchen. I mean, fecal fingers, for one. <laughs> but we'll get to the other reasons in a minute. Yeah, there's like some instant food poisoning. You know what I'm saying? You ate some of her tendies and you ended up with endometriosis. <laughs> Was it worth it? <laughs> She baked some sort of creamy baked chicken dish, and she used my daddy's cast iron skillet to do it so she could get that sear and then just pop it in the oven. Okay, no issues there. I was just happy seeing my friends, and I got to make fun of her cutting an onion by just standing there with a raised brow. Make fun of her cutting an onion, but for what reason? <laughs> I don't understand. This is your friend, right? You don't step in and offer to help. You're just like, oh, I'm the king of the kitchen. <laughs> it's a bad look, honestly. I understand your frustration, but come on. You don't need to get too high and mighty. The problem arose the following day when I entered the kitchen to grab an energy drink from the fridge. And I saw that skillet still on the stove. I had retired to my bedroom before she was done cooking because it was late and I had work in the morning. I kind of just rolled my eyes because, of course, she didn't bother to fucking clean it. But I didn't think much of it because cast iron is sturdy. And she had the day off. Well, <laughs> I assumed wrongly that she would get to it when she woke up. Or at the very least, before I got home. But no, still dirty. Whatever. Tomorrow, for sure. <laughs> Fast forward a month. And that skillet is still dirty. One month! Four weeks! We both cleaned the kitchen in that time, but the skillet remains dirty. <laughs> uh, we have an old Mexican standoff over that skillet. For reference, this is what it looked like the morning after she used it. Yeah, it could use a good soak or something like that. No, wait, we're not supposed to do that with cast iron? I'm a little bit confused. See, I don't know all of the kitchen je ne sais quoi either. According to Ramtide, you just flip that skillet upside down and burn all the crumblies off. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to work, right? And it has now been a month since it's been washed. Now, why haven't I washed it since I clean up all her other kitchen messes? Well, frankly, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to have to clean up her messes anymore. And I want this to be a symbol of that. Yes, what a sacrifice from the cast iron skillet. <laughs> it was not involved in any of this. It's like, I'm just trying to do my job. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> I haven't cleaned up any of her other messes since. As I'm writing this, it's currently the 29th of October, and our apartment is kind of a mess, but she's having some friends over for Halloween. I told her I'd help her clean the rest of the apartment if she cleaned the kitchen, and yeah, the kitchen still isn't clean. I'm not shocked by that. <laughs> She's trying to wait you out. You're trying to wait her out. How could this possibly end? I know both of you guys are going to end up moving out of the apartment and the skillet is still going to be there, left up to the next person that moves in. <laughs> so yeah, I've been avoiding the kitchen completely because seeing my poppy's cast iron in such a state is so, so painful. But cast iron is tough. And I'm confident that when she finally gets around to scraping all that shit off it, I'll be able to scrub it down really well and re-season it. I actually kind of enjoy the maintenance and restoring process, so I'm looking forward to it. 
At this point, I'm just keeping track of how long it takes for her to actually wash it. Uh, I wasn't aware that Reddit had a character limit until just now when I tried to post, so whoops, guess I have to split this into a two-parter. Check out part two here, which we're gonna cover at some later date. Well, my final analysis on this is that, you know, Legbeard, she is trying the best that she can. I think that she does need a bit of therapy. There's maybe some undiagnosed mental health issues, especially uh, when we talk about like the period blood on the mattress. You know that ain't normal, all right? There is something going on with her and it needs to get checked out. I do understand that you are allowed to be frustrated with your friend and that overall she is a good friend, but I don't know if making a post on Reddit just completely blasting her about her uh, lack of hygiene and, and cleaning is the way to go about it. You said that you've talked it out before. Well, maybe it's time to talk it out again. You know what I mean? These types of conversations are rarely a one and done type of thing. If I have to remind you every single day that the skillet is still sitting on the counter, then I will. But just sitting there seething, expecting that it eventually will go away is definitely not the answer. The truth is, it sucks ass having roommates, but if you have to do it, then you have to do it, and you have to get along in the best way that you know how. I can't recall or remember if OP mentioned how long they had been staying together, but yeah, this situation is untenable because of both of you. You know, there's two sides to the same story. I'm sure if Legbeard wrote her own story, she'd be like, oh, OP does this and this and that that I don't like. So I try to keep it in mind that, yeah, we are only getting one side of, of this explanation. And to me, I can't even be that angry with the Legbeard. It seems to me like she needs some legitimate professional help, and I hope that she's able to, to find it before too long. We'll get into part two at some other point, but I don't expect that view to change very much. I do thank you for sharing the story with us, as always, OP, and I uh, thank you guys for watching with me. I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did enjoy the video, maybe share it around. That's always a pretty big brain play. We got all kinds of links in the description. Plugs, playlists, podcasts, yes! My social medias as well, Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Oh, and my Patreon with my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them, Jerry, Jerry much, as I do every video. So thank you, Darth Dominus the Degenerate, Robert Waits, Camille Sarah, Jarhead Jerry, Ura. He's eating crayons because Tom stole all my tendies. It's <laughs> a good substitute. <laughs> Logan Wolf, Conrad Inge, and my wire, Jerry. All I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Red X, sir, Landlord Jerry sent some goons after me. Now I'm on the run. Send help and tendies, uh, mostly tendies. I'm hungry. <laughs> Captain Clown Jerry, Hong Kong, Destiny Piper, Aaron Jerry, <laughs> Twisted Child, Sarah Otto Ash, Cinema Susie, for old Lang Sign, Irary isn't that happy. She just unemployed. I hope you get that fixed sooner than later. Silent Revolver, the original Jerry, a Jerry, 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 son of Jersey Jerryville, my Jerry, my junkie. What the? Jerryville Gym Junkies. Yeah, I got it. Jerry's. <laughs> <laughs> Satori, 211 Jerry, the Fellowship of Jerry, a Jerry, a Jubilantly Juggler Jerry's, a Justy Jargonia Jerry, got it, a Lunia Demonista, Ananaki, Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, Aurora Wildheart, Grizzly, Baby Jerry, Bailey Jerry, <laughs> Bailey Jerry, yeah, why not, Bearded Jerry, <laughs> Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Blip Bloop Jerry, Catholic Jerry, Commander J Tank, Confederate Jew going to the Ukraine. Good luck. <laughs> that is Dayton. Dinosaur Nightlight. Disposable Waifu. Dr. Larks. Emergent Jewel. Frozen Over Studios. Fire Drake. Gypsy. Hadrian BR. I can't help falling in love with Jerry. I'm Slim Jerry. Yes, I'm the real Jerry. All you other Slim Jerrys are just imitating Irish pirate. Top of the barn into ya. Irradiated Jam. Itchy Nuts. A pimp named Jay Crisp. J.M. Coon. Jerry Blacktail. Jerry Nice. Jerry Evil. Jerry the Outlaw Mother Trucker. Honk Honk. Jerry's a risk driver. But round three is a failure. I hit the NOS button and a bunch of Jerry Bears fell out of my tailpipe. <laughs> It does happen. Be careful. <laughs> Jarek's Buick Riviera. John Hero. John Jerry Jingleheimer Schmidt. Hey, that's my name too. KJW Kajow. Kruhi. Landlord Jerry. By an ironic twist of fate, broke my own knees, but it's still time to pay rent. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, the lore is getting so deep. Legitimate girth, welcome, my friend. Miss Monday, Lord Jerio, like and subscribe. <laughs> the Lady Nix, Belgar the Destroyer, Metal Factor. His stock portfolio is diversified in tendy coins and marbles. Ah, oh, hell yeah. Give me all your money. I know what to do with it. <laughs> Needless King 89 Nightmare Jerry Oh no Oh get me Jerry Steve Hit Jerry with a bag of marbles After he caught him cheating with Tom Oh that's why he's Orgami Steve now Not Orgami Jerry Steve I see what's going on It's divorce It's so sad <laughs> Paragon Soul Phantom of the Pines Jerry Kins and Jerry Beth Ramtide Lacrimates Rose Jerry Miller TSM Kirby Sarita the Lolita Saucy Octopus ah, Silo Imp <laughs> Staples A.K.A. Jerry Yeet Stephanie Goodner, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tapioca Baglu, Tato Ferret, Tendi the Police, Ten Ton Monster, The Italian Greyhound, Dino, I'm pretty sure it's Dino, The Littlest Who, The Token Trans Queen Jerry, These Jerry Berries Taste Like Jerry Berries. <laughs> the more time between readings means that Marble Jerry is stuck in perpetual purgatory, unable to scream any longer. I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can. I just want to keep it interesting. <laughs> Oh, the one true fusky trying to find a marble to get back to the real world. Um, you probably don't want to blow into that balloon knot. <laughs> uh, inflate my colon. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, unbusy B. <laughs> B3 Prime. Viking Jerry. Winky Tech. Will Megs. Zephyr the Gargoyle. Or just Clay. That's fine too. Welcome to the fold, Clay. Comrade Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is kinda though. <laughs> Redwind, Naga Viper, Side Jerry the Cyborg, Saint's Blessing. One leg Jerry gives Red X all the Teddy coins of the world. And they still ain't worth a whole lot, but that's okay, we're gonna change that. <laughs> a normal Jerry, Mr. Hollyberry, we need more funding. Everyone wants Jerry Berries to gross out their beers and prank their friends. We're working on it. Production is lacking behind at the moment. The economy's not looking too great. <laughs> Hunter of Jerry's Devourer of All Things Tasty. It is Tom, Admiral T Tank, Amara, another stupid hipster, <laughs> Atomic Jerry Zilla, Babby Zacoon, Bartender Kelia, Blue Dubs, Broken Spine Horseradish, Cake Jerry, the original different Jerry, California Jerry Girl, Chevron Seven Locked, Corporal Admiral Princess Furry Warrior Woo Jerry, Crip Titties, Dayton Does, but he needs our help. Come on, Jerry, buddy. Clap your hands if you believe. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> Uh, Defon Jerry, creator of colorful click clacks, dopamine dangerous, electrical fennec, ghost of alpha, hair devil Terry. I'm sorry, I'm such a piece of shit. <laughs> he cannot. Uh, holy berry Jerry, hydra Jerry Solman, janitor Jerry. Some guy in a van came and took the marbles. Uh, I think his name was Jerry. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Gerald of Rivia, Jerry and Tom versus Happy New Year's Weird Be Apocalypse, Jerry the Sussy Baka, Jerry's mom has got it going on. Check out that mustache on Jerry Aldo Rivera. <laughs> Jerry Bean, yum! Jerry Roxas, yay! Jerry's STI got T boned by a 1970 Charger driven by Jerry Toretto. <laughs> Jerry role-playing game. Judge Jerry and Executioner Keaton Tails. Kid Marvelous, Defender of the Innocent. Enemy to the Bearded. Yeah, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> King Tom, Smasher of Jerry Zillas, Kids Akin, Life of Guardian, Little Ann Woods, Lucia Lovecraft, M -M -M Chia, CD. Maybe next time, Milk Fed Gip, Miss Duchess, Not Invisible Angel, Raptor Art, She's My Jerry Pie, Cold Drink a Mountain Dew, What a Big Surprise, Snary the Snom Jerry, <laughs> Spoony the Rogue, Spoopy Scary Jerry Ton, Techno Dubs, The Original Jerry, He's Not, The X Card, but, but seriously, what is that? To Infinity Jerry and beyond! Yeah, we, we doing that right now. <laughs> to the Fish Jerry out of card. Unfortunate Jerry. But first, have you heard about D's Nut? <laughs> Tom promised Jerry Swiss. Oh no, bad Jerry Tom. Be good boy to Swiss. Just fact. So he says, go look it up uh, by anybody in uh, the race video. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, unfortunate Jerry. You ever, you ever go and talk to Candace? No, I'm not going to do it. 
<laughs> Thank you to all of my lovely Jerry's and not Jerry's alike. I do hope that some other people will consider signing up on the Patreon, but if you can't afford to do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow in order to do so. You need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, um, no, yeah, definitely like watching uh, another Red X video or 10 if you want, <laughs> if you got time for me. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.